Welcome, everyone. This is Greg Rock, and on behalf of BPMInstitute.org and IBM, I'd like to welcome you to today's roundtable, How to Combine Lean Six Sigma, SOA, and BPM to Deliver Rear Business Results. We're thrilled to have um, Hans Scully with us from IBM. Uh, Hans is a global business integration group uh, within IBM Software's group. And this uh, webcast is a follow-on to one of the most popular white papers we had featured uh, on bpminstitute.org in 2009. And so we were thrilled that Hans was able to join us today as one of the co-authors uh, of that white paper. And the white paper is still available on the site, and I would encourage you to uh, download that as well um, at your leisure. Um, but today I'd like to introduce um, Hans and his background. Um, and we look forward to learning a little bit more about how IBM's customers have been able to combine these powerful methodologies to deliver real business results. Um, Hans, as I mentioned, is within the uh, Global Business Integration Group. And in that group, his responsibilities include the development of financial models and business cases to support BPM and integration software investments. Um, since uh, 1980, uh, Hans had eight years of background as a business analyst, and so this uh, this will be from a perspective that many of the members in our community will understand, and in total has more than 20 years of hands-on process improvement consulting experience, and in his past uh, performed the, the role of a master evaluator for Minnesota's Malcolm Ballridge-based uh, quality award in the U.S. Um, Hans brings with us a great deal of experience on different methodologies, including Six Sigma, Lean ISO 9000, and obviously Lean Six Sigma. Uh, so without further delay, I'd like to turn things over to Hans Scully. Well, thank you, Greg. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here, but uh, let's just jump right in and move on to the agenda, which appears on slide two, please. Today's webcast is all about bringing together three powerful concepts and their associated capabilities to drive business results services-oriented architectures and business process management, or BPM technologies, both of which are offering businesses new forms of agility and flexibility, and Lean Six Sigma, which is a proven methodology for cost reduction and process improvement. I'll start out with a discussion of key concepts and then move on to a discussion of how to use data to drive project selection, and I'll map BPM and SOA capabilities to Lean Six Sigma's improvement cycle. I'll wrap up with a quick discussion of lessons learned and best practices, and I'll share something we call a value tree, which is useful in calculating BPM ROI. Before I move on from, this agenda, from the agenda slide, note the asterisk by the first two sub-bullets. What I've observed is that there's frequently a divide or a disconnect between Lean Six Sigma practitioners and IT. I think there are various reasons for this, but to gain the most benefit and leverage from BPM, SOA, and Lean Six Sigma, it's critical that Lean Six Sigma teams, practitioners, and executives have a basic understanding of services-oriented architecture and BPM concepts and capabilities. I found the next couple slides to be useful in getting the basic concepts across to a business audience. Next slide, please. At the top of this slide, you see a simple ordering process. In the past, business processes such as this would be automated through one or more large applications. At one time, these large customized applications were the source of both competitive advantage and business stability. As business conditions changed, however, business process logic became deeply embedded and locked away in millions of lines of often undocumented application code that was becoming risky, expensive, and very slow to change. Manual workarounds, the rekeying of the same data into multiple systems, for example, were often developed to fill the gaps. To make matters worse, as change became more difficult, the frequently chosen alternative was to duplicate needed functionality which meant that even more specialized code and manual processes were created, making the problem worse. The result? Higher IT costs and lower productivity, a growing IT project backlogs, and inability to respond appropriately, fast enough, to newer changing market conditions. According to IBM research, over 70% of the typical IT budget is spent overcoming the limitations of existing systems, while less than 30% is spent on acquiring new capabilities that provide competitive advantage to the business today. Add in the business costs associated with the manual workarounds and the effect of bad or stale data on decision making, and the impact is even greater. I suspect that this situation and the resulting inability of IT to respond quickly to improvement requests over 
time has contributed to the, div the divide that exists between Lean Six Sigma and IT teams in many companies. In this economy, driving out waste and inefficiency while increasing the ability to manage processes more effectively becomes critical. Next slide, please. Advances in technology and technical standards are now allowing IT budgets to be reclaimed and the organization repositioned with services-oriented architectures and BPM technology platforms, allowing IT to rethink how it designs and implements technical solutions. At the bottom of this slide, you'll see now the same business process implemented as a set of services. I like to think of services as discrete bits of high-value business functionality packaged in software code. This business functionality may be found in existing applications and may be exposed as a service which protects the legacy investment. They're standards-based, Lego-like building blocks that encapsulate best practices, and they're reusable. If you take a look, a closer look at create customer order, the first step in this process, for, for example, it's easy to imagine lower-level technical services underneath that get customer information from multiple sources as something that's used here and then again elsewhere. The same service or set of services can be re recombined in different ways. When I use this slide with a business audience, and my goal is to communicate the value and benefit of a more modular approach, I try to stay away from technical level terms that while may be interesting, while, while interesting to many of us, may confuse a business audience. I focus on the Lego concept, the notion of plug and play components that are easier to test change, replace, and reuse, all resulting in a more flexible, cost-effective, and adaptive business environment. The key message from IT to business, IT is now an enabler of change rather than an inhibitor, if that attitude existed, and should be viewed as an active partner in the transformation and continuous improvement that's going on in the organization. Next slide, please. I go on to describe how services and the enterprise service bus make it easy to securely extend business processes to customers and suppliers. In this example, the customer, through a service, enters their own order information. Once they've done that, a message is sent to the next service in line and credit is checked. A third party uh, may be providing the credit checking service, or alternatively, a verified credit service may, be, may access multiple business unit applications to determine just how exposed the customer is overall and how much of their improved credit or approved credit they've used across the enterprise. On this slide, I add a couple of BPM components. Process monitor, which provides visibility into process performance, and the service registry, which facilitates reuse and governments, governance. It's a different way of thinking. And the whole idea of highly modular and reusable business services and processes should be highly appealing to Lean Six Sigma professionals. But education is needed. The process does not have to be made up entirely of services, but as more services are created, process improvement and, uh, and design become easier. Need to improve the way that a business unit handles credit checks? Look into the repository of existing services to determine if there's something there to be reused. Lean Six Sigma professionals working shoulder to shoulder with IT can clarify not only the business requirements needed in the process and in, therefore in the service, but how best to measure their performance as well. We'll talk more about measures shortly, but measures, key performance indicators, are critical to the success of this approach. KPIs provide insight into how well this process is meeting business objectives, or will meet business objectives, and also into the why the process is performing the way it is, as KPIs reveal bottlenecks, constraints, and opportunities for improvement. Next slide, please. This slide simply top lines some of the core BPM platform capabilities. When talking with a business audience, I can't simply assume that everyone knows what today's BPM is from an IT perspective. The concept of business process management has been around for years. What's new are technical capabilities bundled together into a scalable and integrated platform. In this slide, I've included some of the basics such as process modeling and monitoring, and human task management, which provides automated support to previously manual tasks to work lists that may be more effectively managed and balanced by process owners. And I've also included in the list process choreography and exception handling, in which the process engine may back out a transaction or generate alert in the event of failure or delay. And, I've all, and I also introduced some of the more advanced platform capabilities, such as complex event processing 
and I do this through stories. For example, just before the holidays, I got a call from one of my credit card companies asking me if I had just made an online donation to $1.64 to the British Red Cross, along with another transaction. They had detected multiple attempts to enter the three-character security code found on the back of my card. These were a series of events that, when looked at together, indicated a pattern of fraud. Some VPN platforms, IBMs included, offer these kinds of capabilities. Next slide, please. So what's the big deal about Six Sigma performance? Six Sigma means less than 3.4 defects per million opportunities, and you'll hear practitioners talk about DPMO. This means that performance quality meets customer expe expectations and specifications 99.9966% of the time. So why isn't 99.9 .9 good enough? Next slide, please. During everyday life in the U.S., 99.9% .9 performance means one hour of unsafe drinking water every month, two, or short, two short or long landings at most airports each day, 500 wrong surgical procedures per week, and so on. Some of these things, some of the things on this list are rather alarming. Some are rather surprising. My least favorite, favorite as a frequent flyer, is a short or long landing bullet. I'm sure I've been on some of those planes. And the newborns given to wrong parents, well, that would explain a few things as I think back to my childhood, but, but, I'm, but I'm just kidding. I, I really do love my sister. Next slide, please. This is a useful little table that maps Six Sigma score to DPMO and to the percentage defect-free. Most companies perform at a Three Sigma level through their core processes, although this can vary widely and is, of course, influenced by customer specification. It's certainly possible to see a negative Sigma score performance, and I've worked a number of these projects. Airline safety, on the other hand, is performing at a level higher than Six Sigma, and the industry does this through a series of checks and, uh, and inspections that are designed to eliminate the potential for failure. Sustained performance at this level can stretch a company's resources. Lost luggage, however, often seems to perform at a lower level. For example, a few months ago, I did the same presentation at the Business Analyst Conference in Boston. I rarely check my luggage, but decided on this occasion to check my bag on my return flight. And guess what? Yep, lost. So as I was talking with the airline service representative, she said, don't worry, we find 98% of the bags lost. So, of course, you know what I'm doing. I'm plotting this against this chart in my head. So that's maybe 8,000 bags lost. Not too bad, unless you're one of the 8,000, and if it happens to be on the outbound flight, of course, it's worse, and that's happened to me too. The bottom line is this. Somebody pays for the defects, and the cost can ripple. In my example, it's the cost of the courier to deliver my luggage, the $25 certificate that I was given by the airline, the time required to track and find my bag within 48 hours, and so on. It all adds up, and this is waste that can be eliminated. Next slide, please. So let's look at how Lean, Lean and Six Sigma work together. Today, we typically see three different types of improvement teams or project, Kaizen, Lean, and Six Sigma. Many companies draw from the tools and techniques of each to create their own methodologies, tuned to, to their specific needs, challenges, and cultures. In general, Kaizen projects are short dur duration, lasting one week or less, with a very focused, limited scope objective. They look for quick fixes, and place an emphasis on the elimination of waste and cycle time reduction. Lean evolved out of the Toyota production system with the term lean coined in the 1990s. Lean projects have a longer duration, typically 30 to 90 days, and seek to eliminate waste, balance workflows, and standardize processes. Projects are often cross-functional in nature, spanning multiple departments. Six Sigma projects involve deeper, more in-depth analysis, seeking to eliminate unwanted variation exceptions and defects from new or existing processes. The source of variation, the root cause, is typically unknown and must be discovered. Six, six Sigma projects are longer in duration, often lasting 60 to 120 days. One thing to keep in mind as you move from short duration Kaizen projects to more involved Six Sigma projects, the costs go up. Therefore, it's important to pick the right approach, given your objectives, and to think about iterative improvement. BPM and SOA can help improve consistency and reduce some of these costs, specifically through process monitors that gather data needed by the teams, 
process modeling tools that allow both high-level business modeling and deeper technical modeling and simulation, and repositories that allow models to be managed and services to be reused in process improvement. In this slide, you see the, an iterative approach that was developed by a medical device manufacturer. Step one at the top of the slide is to remove waste, or MUDA, from the process. The sources of waste are generally known. Toyota, for example, has seven. The device manufacturer has 18. Step two then depicts the balancing of workflows, which may include shifting resources from one activity or subprocess to another. By focusing on these two things first, waste removal and balanced workflows that allow demand to pull work through the process, quick hits, the low-hanging fruit, can often be more easily identified and the process improved in a shorter period of time. In a down economy, cost, uh, cost cutting becomes the number one priority. Lean's emphasis on the elimination of waste and non-value adding activities is a great first step. Six Sigma places emphasis on removing unwanted variation, exceptions and defects from a process. The sources of a variation typically must be discovered and various tools and techniques are used to do this. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go all through all of them today. I do want to draw your attention to the diagram in the green box on the lower right. Notice the difference in the shape of the bell, of the bell curve uh, in the diagram. The tighter curve represents a process with a standard deviation. The tighter curve represents a process. I'm, I'm sorry. Notice the difference between the shape of the bell curve in the diagrams, the two blue diagrams, number two and number three. Notice how the tighter the curve tightens on the, uh, on the third diagram. The tighter curve represents a process with lower standard deviation from mean performance. Now, you can see this more clearly in the green diagram on the lower right. In this diagram, the red line represents an upper customer specification level. This means that the customer has said that response cycle time in a call center, for example, can't exceed one hour. Current performance level, represented by the blue curve in the green diagram, indicates today's mean performance top of the curve is maybe 50 minutes within customer specifications. But too frequently, performance extends beyond that, which is the blue shaded area to the right. These defects, these are defects that someone needs to pay for. The customer may apply a penalty if the call is not resolved within an hour, or worse, may simply go better, go somewhere else for better service. This process is performing at maybe a, a three sigma level. To improve this process, you can attempt to shift the mean to the left, decrease the standard deviation, meaning be more consistent, or to do or do both. Different techniques can be used to do or to do one or the other. A typical target in a stretch six sigma project is a 70% improvement. The green line in the in the green diagram represents an improved process that has a lower mean, let's say 20 minutes, which is a 50% improvement, and a tighter standard deviation. Process yield, then, is 100% within customer specifications. So that could be the result of an improvement project. Now, before getting too excited, customer specifications can and do change as a result of many things, including competition. Take banking, for example. Today, many of you are seeing pictures of the Great Depression, of people standing in line at the bank. Customers, over time, grew tired of standing in line, and drive-up tellers came about. You don't even have to get out of your car. And then we saw ATMs, then web access, and now mobile access to account information and transactions. Customer specifications change, processes change, and for that reason, IT and organizational flexibility becomes critical. If you believe that your business processes are embedded in your technology, then this is where services-oriented architecture and BPM technology platforms come into play. If your process changes frequently, and you're forced to continually invest in the process because of the inefficiency of change, you may have found a good BPM target. Next slide, please. So let's talk about finding and selecting the right projects. Next slide, please. At the top of this slide, you see a lease processing process with steps A through L. In the boxes below the steps, you see throughput capability for each process step, expressed in the number of leases, lease requests handled per hour. Current market demand, the pull on the process, is 15 leases per hour. You can see that on the right. 
The process as a whole is constrained by step K and cannot produce more than six leases per hour against the market demand of 15. If I fix step K, I raise the performance level of the entire process and now produce at seven per hour. My next target then becomes D and so on. If I do this and I have measures in place, KPIs at each step and for the process as a whole, I can clearly demonstrate to executives that the work I'm doing is making a positive impact on the market. It's been our experience that this is key. In this example, it may seem rather obvious that step K is the place to start improvement efforts, but in the real world, it's often not so easy. The theory of constraints developed by Elihu Goldrad says that the step that is most constraining is the place to start and that all other improvement efforts then become secondary. There's a good reason for this. Fix this and the overall performance is measurably improved. However, with no data and no way to monitor process performance, improvement efforts and process workers themselves are flying blind. So visibility and measures are key. In the real world, the most common approach to project selection is often reactive firefighting or a squeaky wheel rather than through the use of data, as you see here. The manager of the, part of the department that owns Step D, for example, may be more vocal or perhaps more supportive, and so resources and improvement efforts flow there first. And while cost reductions and savings may be possible there, nothing has really been done to increase overall process output. We're still stuck at six leases per hour. As a result, executives who often watch the total process, the process overall, may question what the improvement teams are doing. I believe that Lean Six Sigma initiatives often struggle because they don't have visibility to overall process or system performance and capability, or they may struggle gathering data. And this is where BPM monitoring can really add value. IT, working closely with Lean Six Sigma teams to define meaningful measures, alerts, and real-time dashboards can very quickly provide needed visibility into process performance. During early BPM efforts, it's really important to maximize measurable and visible results. If an early step is the deployment of monitor across core processes to gather data and to provide visibility into the true constraints, step K in our example, then step K is revealed as the correct target. A number of our most successful customers have taken this approach, deploy monitor first to understand current capability, and then use the data to target the improvement efforts. Look at what else the data are telling us in this slide. Step A and step B are performing well over demand, and they may be, in fact, flooding the process, which then starts to back up, dropping from 28 to 11 to 7. Step J is at 40, also well above. Maybe step, step K is overstaffed with specialized resources, thinking lean, this is a form of wasted intellect. And it may be possible to cross-train step J resources and flow them across the process to balance things out. Data are key to BPM impro improvement. All of this could be going on in your processes. But without monitor, without that visibility, you have no way of knowing. Next slide, please. Processes tend to break at the borders as well as they cross internal and external boundaries. So establishing KPI listing posts here will alert you to breakdowns early on. This is especially critical as the number of processes that make use of external services and providers increase over time. This is the strategy of outsourcing. There's a really great Sloan article by Michael Hammer called The Seven Deadly Sins of Performance Measurement and How to Avoid Them. One of the sins is provincialism. Provincialism is the sin of letting organizational boundaries and concerns dictate performance metrics. Measuring only the sub-processes inevitably leads to sub-optimization and conflict, according to Hammer. It's very common to find pockets of measures. Different departments or teams led by enlightened managers may have measures in place. However, they may not measure the core process that cuts through their department. Measuring the process as a whole from end to end, in addition to departmental handoffs, provides visibility into the system. Gartner also advocates this approach. A quick comment on alerts. Process monitors are driven by events that occur in a process, the issuing of a lease, a delay in completing a work item, in the case of a managed workflow, for example, an escalation, a backlog, complaints, and exceptions, and so on. 
When designing a process monitoring solution, it's important to think about both event-driven dashboards and alerts. The alert capability, capability allows corrective action to be taken sooner, before problems become bigger ones. It also allows the process to be viewed from more of an exception basis. Next slide, please. This is Six Sigma's define, measure, analyze, improve, and control cycle for improving an existing process, often referred to as the MAC. I've added two additional steps, select and realize, and I'll use this cycle to illustrate where BPM platform capabilities play a role and add new sets of tools. First, though, a high-level overview of what happens in each of the phases. Tools, techniques, and the depth to which a team will go depend upon the type of project. Kaizen versus Lean versus Six Sigma. The problem being solved, and normally there's a and normally there's a blended approach. So as I walk through the phases, I'm leaning. That's an intended pun. In my description, toward Lean and Six Sigma projects, more so than Kaizen although BPM and SOA capabilities can benefit all. Normally, you would see BPM and SOA capabilities applied uh, toward Lean and Six Sigma projects, however. Selecting the right project is a critical first step and often one of the most difficult things to do. So in the previous slides, we've, we've seen how select, the select phase, may be driven by monitor data that reveals process constraints and bottlenecks. So let me move on to define. The key in the define phase is establishing the correct scope for the project, driven by the voice of the customer and the voice of the business. And to capture this in clearly articulated problem and objective statements that stretch the improvement team. High-level process models and initial business case are created here, and an improvement team is normally assigned at this point. And it's critical that that team includes both Lean Six Sigma analysts and IT representatives. Unfortunately, I've seen IT left on the sidelines too many times even though IT is more than ever a part of the solution or is impacted by the solution in some way. Not involving them early means that the creative application of available or new technical capabilities may be lit, missed, along with a truly innovative alternative. So I, I, I'm a, a big believer that, the, uh, that a team should be a blended team that, uh, that includes both IT and, uh, and business. Incidentally, the high-level high process walkthrough and mapping work done at this phase may reveal a number of quick wins or just do-its that can be acted on immediately to deliver results. Think back to the earlier slide where waste and non-value-adding activity is eliminated from the process and the workflow balanced. There's no need to reduce variation for wasteful steps that simply should be eliminated from the process altogether. So focus on eliminating waste, balancing the workflows, and then bring to bear some of the more advanced tools. In the measure phase, data from monitor dashboard, dashboards again plays a role and is extended with additional data, including that which looks at the quality of specific inputs and outputs. In this step, we establish the baseline, making sure that the data selected and gathered are clearly tied to the objectives and problem statements that come out of define. In analyze, a more detailed process model is uh, more detailed process models are typically developed with time and cost data entered. Exception paths and corrective actions are modeled in detail to determine the cost and impact of correcting the defects. Simulation here helps determine which of the exceptions are most costly over time, essentially a weighted Pareto analysis. And the process may look, be looked at from different perspectives, from the perspective of value add, unnecessary complexity and useless information, and regulatory compliance and controls, for example. Additional Lean Six Sigma tools are used to determine root cause and to develop a list of improvement opportunities in the analyze phase. A lot of work is done to improve. Here, alternative future state models are created, evaluated, and compared using simulation. Existing services may be reused, adding them to process models from the repository, extending best practices, and speeding implementation. Measures are also designed here and measures are critical to BPM success. Interestingly, measures are often the last thing considered by IT. IT tends to focus on functionality first and reports or data last. And this is where Lean Six Sigma can really help IT. Measures not only help process owners manage process performance, but they also give visibility to BPM success. 
with VPM platform capabilities, future state process models prepared by a business analyst or Lean Six Sigma team are then enhanced by IT who add technical, technical attributes needed to create a prototype prior to rollout. VPM and SOA lend themselves well to rapid prototyping, and a prototype allows additional feedback to be gathered from process workers and owners, increasing buying and, and adoption. Control is a key step focused on sustaining the change. Next slide, please. A number of studies show that up to 70% of the gains that result from an improvement project are lost in the first three to six months following implementation. I think this is actually a high number, especially if IT is part of the solution as it tends to force and force discipline. But regardless, process change can be a lot like stretching a rubber band. As you introduce change, there is always the tendency for the process, the organization, to snap back like a rubber band into the old ways of doing things. Process monitoring is therefore critical to sustaining the initial gains provided by providing visibility into real-time performance. KPI dashboards not only facilitate control, control phase, but they also show, show how the, and show how the new process performs after implementation. But, allow, but it also allows process owners to detect the snapback effect and to take corrective action early. As a side note, it's also critical that process owners and workers know what to do with the, with the measures. Key, key in those organizations where, where measures are something that are new to them. So as, you, as the improvement team works and begins to deploy measures, a, a best practice is to make sure that the process measures that are given to the process workers are something they can affect, that they can, they can, make, that they can change uh, through their work. Some of you may have noticed an earlier quote on one of the agenda slides from an Aberdeen study. To wit, three quarters of 160 companies surveys, surveyed believe they are flying their business processes blind and without instruments. This lack of visibility, often due to old application software, is inhibiting level, all levels of management from seeing bottlenecks in such critical processes as capital risk management, claims tracking, compliance, inventory management, and customer service. The study also found that those companies monitoring their performance saw a 12% decrease in process-related expenses and an 18% return on investment simply by giving workers added visibility into their processes. And this is without working improvement projects. Next slide, please. Finally, in the realized phase, a solution is replicated and standardized. Replication is proactively applying the improvement solution to similar processes. Standardization is proactively applying the best practices to dissimilar processes. The, nature, the modular nature of an SOA-based BPM solution facilitates both replication and standardization. Services encapsulate best practices. They are designed to be reused and therefore business processes composed of these services can also be reused. This, this phase is a proactive push of, of these capabilities out into the environment versus waiting for the next improvement to come along. Replication may involve pushing out a new get customer information service or a verified credit service, things that are done routinely in multiple processes. Or, an improved or new process may be pushed out into another business unit or division in its entirety. In fact, business rules and policies may be used to effectively turn on or tune a process in a new division or geography as training and localization occurs. These may even be used to assemble processes dynamically on the fly, combining different services as needed based upon process inputs. Service repositories, such as Webster Registry and Repository, another BPM platform component mentioned earlier, play a key role in the management and reuse of services and, they, and support this phase. Next slide, please. The next couple of slides simply map a few of the key BPM platform capabilities to the improvement cycle. On this slide, we look at process monitoring. Webster Business Monitor, Monitor can be quick to deploy. We have a number of customers who have chosen Monitor as a way not only to get started with BPM, but as the way they approach BPM and continuous improvement. Deploy KPI dashboards first, deploy alerts to trap exceptions, 
and then use this data to identify both constraints and best practices where one group may be outperforming all the others, for example, something that could be replicated. Data collection can be time-consuming, a time-consuming exercise for Lean Six Sigma teams as well. So capturing event-driven data automatically simplifies and speeds this process too. Business users also have the ability to define and implement new KPIs on their own, even across applications with little or no IT involvement, which increases business flexibility and responsiveness. Monitor can even use data and performance uh, against KPIs to trigger action on its own. Escalation rules can be defined to trigger an alert if a, if a work item sits in queue too long, for example, or another process could be started automatically. A corrective action process, for example, if conditions go out of bounds, even based on predictive measures, as you can see in the lower right portion of the slide, those are the predictive measures. And process owners can monitor work queues as well, or be alerted to look at a queue to adjust workloads or to smooth workloads across teams of people. Of course, this could be done automatically as well. Finally, increased visibility not only improves manageability and age project targeting, but it also stimulates this natural improvement, meaning if you give people a window into how they are performing today, they often improve their performance on their own. That's, a, that's an, a, a benefit that can't be overlooked or shouldn't be overlooked. Next slide, please. This slide highlights process modeler capabilities. Modeler enables Lean Six Sigma teams to analyze processes from different perspectives, including the perspective of waste, value add, risk, and even regulatory requirements using something we call classifiers. You can see them highlighted on the left-hand side of the, of the, of the slide with um, uh, non-value adding being highlighted in red. Sim classifiers can be color-coded so that needed regulatory controls, for example, appear in red in a process model, or they can be displayed using swim lanes. A powerful combination is swim lane by role and color code by value add so that the time spent on non-value adding activities by role quickly becomes visible to analysts as they work their process uh, the improvement project. Simulation allows improvement alternatives to be evaluated and compared with minimal risk, aiding in project imp and implementation planning. Larger projects may be broken down into smaller improvement phases with the benefit of each phase more uh, easily determined uh, as well. Simulation should be viewed as a new tool for Lean Six Sigma practitioners. Rather than experimenting in the real world, business problems are translated into simulation problems and evaluated there. At the bottom of the slide, you'll see a simulation running. The red connector is a transaction moving through the process. Counters above each step show the number of transactions in queue at each step, and blue coloring indicates a bottleneck. Variation can be added to the simulation as well to more closely simulate real world conditions. Airline distributions, for example, can be used to simulate queuing, people standing in line. This is useful when adding cost and time data, as tasks don't often take exactly five minutes, but may take five minutes plus or minus two, for example. That's a normal distribution. So you can add this variation to the process, to the process model to aid in simulation. Business analysts can use predefined measures when modeling to identify the measures uh, needed to support the improvements, and these can be used uh, then directly by IT to set up the initial dashboard. So the business pro process modeler identifies the measures in the model, and then uh, uh, and then those uh, are used by IT to create something called a measures model. And models may be shared via a browser as well. Next slide, please. The process engine and the services that make up the process support improve, control, and realize phases. The engine choreographs and manages the interactions of people and systems across the process, and this includes error handling and compensation. It's easy to design, to design a process where everything goes right. What's tough is building a process that knows what to do when things go wrong, and that's where compensation comes in. A BPM platform should have the ability to handle and compensate for failure automatically. Sometimes, especially when handling exceptions and corrective actions, it's useful to be able to create ad hoc tasks on the fly and still have the process engine manage those in the context of the bigger process. This is easier said than done in many BPM platforms. So look for advanced human task and workflow capability when evaluating a platform. The screenshot at the bottom of this slide shows tasks being reassigned, 
which the engine will then continue to track and control. The screenshot on the left shows work items in a work list, one of which a process worker has claimed. You can see the electronic form in the window at the right of the screenshot. Finally, the platform should include integration capabilities that allow the process to interact with existing messaging infrastructures and systems, and adapters to add flexibility and functionality. Many application vendors have not yet fully exposed full application function functionality via web services, so an adapter often makes sense. Next slide, please. A couple of comments about business rules and business policies. Processes that start out simple often become more complex over time. The complexity is driven by new customer segments, new markets, products, business models, uh, evolving standards, competition, and changes in regulatory requirements. Somehow, this complexity needs to be handled. As with traditional application development, one way to deal with this is to code the complexity into the process flows themselves. As this is done, however, reusability and flexibility decrease, and you're right back where you were before. Further change is difficult, slower, and requires more testing and becomes more expensive. Alternatively, business rules and policies allow much of this growing complexity to be abstracted from, from, the, uh, from code and placed into tooling designed to manage it, and, and this, you also have the ability to give control directly to process owners. They can change the rules in the process without IT involvement. Contrast this with classic application development where rules are embedded in the application code and are controlled and tested by IT. If you give the control of the business, if you give control to the business and not only if you give control to the business, not only do flexibility and responsiveness improve, but change can be used then as a competitive differentiator. Designed properly, process owners may adjust the process to meet the needs of different channels, geographies, customer segments, or even peaks and valleys in the business cycle itself. Next slide, please. Here are a couple best practices. First, pair up rules with KPI dashboards that show the impact of the rules change. This gives process owners the feedback needed to determine quickly if a rule change has the desired effect and the ability to adjust the process again as needed, built-in improvement, if you will. Second, and this comes from a company here in Minnesota that discovered the benefits of this by accident, establish a rule steward role and include this individual on the improvement team. In the past, this company had assigned uh, an IT process designer and a trained Lean, Lean Six Sigma facilitator to lead each of their improvement teams. One day, a project got kicked off, and there were no process designers available, so they grabbed one of the folks who worked with their rules engine. What they learned was that this individual looked at the process from a completely different perspective, the perspective of rules. And they found rules everywhere, in application code, outdated documentation that wasn't consistent, consistently followed anyway, and, in, and buried in people's heads. They found new ways, as a result, to improve processes by abstracting the rules centralizing them and treating them as assets, and eventually giving control to the process owners. So now every major project that they do includes a, a, a Lean Six Sigma facilitator, an IT process designer, and a rule steward. And the name steward, by the way, was carefully chosen as part of the core team. Rules are flagged in the process models, so think about classifiers for rules, and captured in a standard XML format even if they're not loaded in the rules engine during the initial improvement effort. I really like this approach. This, in fact, takes a single Lean Six Sigma facilitator, a single person from the Lean Six Sigma team, and pairs them with two people from IT who also bring different perspectives. This is this has proven very effective for this company. Next slide, please. So let's wrap up with a quick discussion of, of getting started. Next slide. So some of the things that we've learned as a result and, uh, and some of the things we'd recommend uh, to get started, uh, first of all, establish a core team to provide BPM guidance. This can be a center of excellence or a project office or some dedicated cross-functional team to provide guidance and governance to BPM priorities and projects. IT representatives might include technical architects or process developers familiar with the digital makeup of the core processes 
and business representatives uh, may include individuals that have a clear understanding of the strategic goals and objectives of the organization, the core processes themselves, and existing KPIs. Lean Six Sigma representatives will likely include those that understand various improvement tools and techniques, with a, along with facilitation experience. This team would develop adoption, change management, and governance plans. They would create a BPM SOA roadmap that includes skill building and acquisition. This team would also create a business case or return on investment framework that's used to consistently calculate return on investment for each project and from best pra practice replication and standardization that's found in the realized phase. So not only do they look at the, B that the, at the return on investment from the, from the project itself, but they continually monitor return on investment and actually capture it as well from the reuse of the services and the reuse of the, pro and the improved processes. Second, adopt a BPM SOA Lean Six Sigma development methodology and improvement framework to align and focus business and IT efforts. This method should be iterative and agile in nature versus one that follows a more rigid waterfall approach. Eventually, this method brings together the best of Lean Six Sigma and agile IT methods, standards, and techniques into a, into a single methodology, a blended methodology, that fits your organization, your culture, and your goals. An improvement framework typically includes a way to decompose process, processes and KPIs, a, a process uh, classification framework, for example. And a good place to go for this is apqc.org, where you'll find a variety of process classification frameworks by industry and KPIs as a starting point, or IBM's bpmblueworks.com, bpmblueworks.com, where you'll find a broad array of assets and tools to help you, including process maps. And of course, the BPM Institute has a wealth of information to help uh, as well. Third, deploy Business Monitor to gather KPI data and guide project selection. I've discussed this earlier, so we won't go into it in more detail here. Fourth, select the right project. By this we mean a meaningful customer-facing process or key sub-process that makes a difference to business executives or is the source of customer dissatisfaction. Think back to the theory of constraint slide and make sure that when you implement change that a visible and meaningful, meaningful KPI is effective. Contain the scope, picking a project that's too, too large or applying a rigid methodology can slow benefits realization and results. Start with lean techniques to eliminate and simplify steps. Use modeler to evaluate improvement alternatives use simulation to support the business case. Break large projects into more manageable, smaller projects, and build a prototype to gain uh, buy-in and to actually show people or to allow people to see what an improved BPM project might look like. And then if you can reuse this prototype in, in production or allow it to become the basis for production, that's, that's a bonus. But, and it's also possible with BPM and SOA. Increase flexibility in the process by abstracting process change and variability into business rules and policies, and allow direct control of these rules and policy, policies by the process owners. And finally, lead your BPM efforts with the right people. Years ago, I came up with something that we call the 10-40-50 rule, which states that 10% of the success of any technical project is the technology chosen. 40% is how that technology is implemented. 50% is the attitude and skills of the people who use it. And normally, it's that 50% that's not budgeted for. BPM forces a paradigm shift in business and in Lean Six Sigma teams. From applications, from an application paradigm to a workflow and KPI a dashboard paradigm. In IT, the paradigm shifts from one of hand coding uh, to one of wiring and the use of declarative editors, which is normally found uh, in the BPM platforms. And in management, there's a paradigm shift as well. Involving people on both the business and IT side and even in executive management that are respected by their peers, have a natural willingness to share, and embody best practices increase the likelihood that others will look at what they do and try to emulate it. And these are the leaders that then, and these leaders then will share the secrets of how Next slide, please. 
There's much more that I could share, but I'd like to finish up with this. It's something we call a value tree for BPM, and it breaks benefit down in a way that can be quantified. Business process management delivers measurable benefit to both business and IT. From an IT perspective, benefit is primarily about cost reduction. The whole idea behind SOA is flexibility and reuse, which translate eventually into reduced effort, including lower build costs and lower cost of change. Change capability is built into the BPM solution through business rules and policies, for example. And there are ripple benefits as well, including a reduction in the IT backlog. So as, research, as reuse increases, resources tend to free, and those resources then can be applied to, um, uh, to dealing with the BPM or with the IT backlog. Business side benefits include the ability to change more rapidly and to use this to drive new opportunity. It becomes easier to add new channels or geographies and to respond to changes in regulatory requirements, for example. As flexibility increases, so does the ability to change business models. All of these things contribute to revenue growth and improve productivity as the manual workarounds begin to disappear. So on the business side, look for increases in revenue and look for improved business productivity. Process monitoring alone has been shown to decrease process-related expenses while enabling more rapid response when things go wrong. And Lean Six Sigma methodology forces the elimination of waste and non-value adding activities, which benefit both business and IT. All of these things on the right side of this value tree can be quantified and incorporated into a business case. The value tree then becomes the framework for calculating ROI. This is simply an example. And uh, it, it, as you're working, as the as the improvement teams are working their um, uh, improvement projects, one of the things they should be tracking is ROI. And this, something like a value tree such as this gives them a framework from when, within which to work. Next slide. And with that, I'll end my presentation by saying thank you for listening. And I hope you found this useful. And best of luck on your BPM and continuous improvement efforts and projects. And have a good day. Thank you. All right, well, <clears throat> Hans Scully with IBM. One, thank you very much, Hans, um, for your time today and, and walking our members um, through uh, some of the things that IBM is seeing around the application of Lean Six Sigma uh, with SOA and BPM initiatives. And we'd also like to thank the folks at IBM, uh, not just for hosting today's roundtable, but their ongoing support of our community. And I uh, look forward to uh, continuing that relationship here in 2010. Um, special thanks to all our members for your time today. Uh, we appreciate uh, you coming to visit us and attending this webcast. Um, you may find additional information on Lean Six Sigma within our organizational performance bulletin. Um, you can uh, subscribe to that through your profile on BPM Institute. And we look forward to hosting you on a future roundtable. Thank you all very much.